Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, I'm going to try and put some money where my mouth is and talk a little bit more about Kafka, but this time actually set it up and run it. Uh, so the deal with Kafka is that it is a giant system written in Java. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about yeah. what it's going to take to spin this up, Simon. Well, I'll let everybody pass judgment on the fact that it's written in Java for a few seconds and then pass judgment on the .NET community for not having a similar thing built up in their technology. Uh, but I'm what always I... judgy today. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, let, let's be fair, I'm always judgy. Uh, this is true. So what I have here is a pretty simple looking Docker Compose file that I modified from something on the internet somewhere. Um, but... The deal is basically that you need to have two containers running here. So this Docker Compose file will start up a copy of Zookeeper, uh, which is just a distributed configuration tool. So you can think of it as like, I don't know what a good companion is. Uh, so it's like, uh, we've talked in the past about Azure App Config. So it's kind of like that, um, except it's distributed inside of your cluster. Um, so this is what you would use to coordinate talking a little bit between different Kafka nodes and spreading around the right configuration. Uh, and then we have the actual Kafka image here. Uh, and this one is just a single image. So we're just going to have a single node in our Kafka cluster. We could scale this up as big as you wanted. But for the moment, we really only need the, the one node to demonstrate that we can talk to different things. Uh, so this is all this necessary for that. And I have already run over here just a Docker Compose up uh, probably so long ago that it has fallen out of my history. Let's see. Oh, oh. Uh, so it, it just starts up, um, it checks with Zookeeper, and then Kafka itself starts up. And it is a fairly chatty sort of startup system. Um, <laughs> it's definitely so. a lot going on there. There is. I have not read through it. It just kind of works. So I'm willing to kind of accept it and, and move on. Uh, so we've got two projects in here. So I've got a producer and a consumer in here. So we'll start maybe with the producer here and we'll just go through how that works. Uh, so it's fairly simple here. I'm just using the, the new .NET templates here. So there's no main method here. Uh, these but, are just console apps? Then? Yeah, these are just console apps that I'm going to run here. So. Uh, I'm pulling in this library here, which is this Confluent to Kafka. So Confluent is the, the name of the company that produces Kafka, or I guess is somewhat behind it. Is, it is an open source project from Apache. Uh, and once we have this here, then I'm just setting this up with a bootstrap server. So we only have a single server here. Uh, if you had multiple servers, you could feed multiple servers in here and let it kind of pick which server to use. I'm not sure exactly how it works behind the scenes if it does round robin, uh, but I think you just need to be able to like bootstrap yourself into the cluster. And then that's enough information for it to sort of like figure out where the entire cluster is. So it knows how to, where to send messages to should one of the nodes be failing or be down when this goes to produce something. Uh, so based on that configuration here, we also just set a client ID to be the, the current host name. Uh, so this is just so that you can see from whence a message came. Uh, so you can set this to anything you wanted, really. It's just a string. Uh, but for now, we're just going to set it to, I guess, whatever this returns, probably localhost or something like that. Uh, and then inside of this, I'm just going to send a single message out to an endpoint here. So I'm going to send this out to uh, this endpoint here. So this user 1005 topic here. Uh, and we're just going to have the value of the message be when we sent the message. So this could be anything here. You could write a bunch of JavaScript in here or, uh, or JSON in here or anything like that. I'm noticing that kind of the edge of my screen is a bit cut off. I'm going to try and resize some things here. Oops, not like that. So those topics, do you need to define them anywhere or are they just kind of implicit that you... Yeah, so they, a name there they're going to end up being created, created as we send messages to them. Uh, okay. So there, there is like a bunch of command line stuff that you can do. There are some command line clients that you can use for uh, setting this stuff up yeah. uh, and manipulating it. I haven't played with any of those yet, so we'll probably get around to that in some later episode here. Uh, so this is fairly simple. We just go and send a message out to this 
consumer. Uh, so, but, but we we sent it to a place, uh, and then we're gonna go and take a look over here at the consumer here. So, what I'm gonna do in this consumer is a lot of it is fairly similar. So, we end up going off building up the same sort of configuration here. So, the same bootstrap server. Um, we also can set the group ID on this. So this group ID is the name of the service that is doing the consumption. So within a partition, you're going to end up with, or within a topic, you're going to end up with like a bunch of messages sent to it. And as a consumer, I really only want to see those messages like one time. So once I have consumed it, I don't really want to see those messages again. So what you can do is you can say to Kafka, like, hey, I am a consumer called, in this case, consumer number one, and I have already seen messages one through 500 on this topic. So I don't want to see any more messages on this topic. Um, what I would like to see is just like messages 501 on. Uh, and Kafka will keep track of that. So although those messages still exist in Kafka, we're not gonna see them because we've already consumed those messages. Um, we just have a little bit of code here to stop the consumer when we press a key on it. Uh, this almost works perfectly. <laughs> uh, and then down here, we're gonna go and use this consumer builder here. So based on this config, we're going to build up and then we're gonna to subscribe to this user 1005 topic in here. Uh, and then inside of our loop here, as so long as we keep consuming, we're going to go and consume the next message off the, the queue, basically off of the, the topic. And then we're going to commit it. So this thing is basically what tells Kafka, hey, we have consumed this message. So if you were doing a bunch of processing on this message, you would end up doing it kind of in here. Uh, and then once you were satisfied that the consumption had been completed, then you would go and commit that. Um, so there is a setting in here that you can auto commit. So basically once you consume a message, then behind the scenes, it will go and write back to Kafka that you have consumed that message. I don't love that because it does that in a background thread. So depending on if something fails in your processing, you can end up in situations where you have marked a message as consumed and it hasn't been completely worked on yet and your system crashes in here. So now you're gonna lose that message forever. Uh, and then there's also the flip side too, where you end up like um, writing at the wrong time that the message has been consumed and then you end up with the message twice. So you, you complete consumption and then the thread that does the background writing hasn't quite completed yet. So it's much better to actually go and do an explicit commit here. Uh, so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna write that we have committed the offset. Uh, and then there's just some error handling down here. And then eventually we just go and close the consumer. So this is going to run basically forever, um, waiting for messages. So it's just gonna stay alive for the, pro the lifetime of the processing. So we can start this up here. So I just have these two things here. So I have the producer on the left-hand side and I have the consumer on the right-hand side. So we can start off this consumer here first uh, and it should basically do nothing um, once it starts up. And then we're gonna run the producer here and this is gonna dump like a single message out. So we can see that we produce message basically number 13 in the, the topic. And then over here we have consumed message number 13 in the topic uh, and we've committed to say that we have indeed read that message so every time we produce a message on our left hand side it's going to end up here at our right hand side as well uh, but you notice that this is like number 14 here uh, so what we can do is we can stop this consumer and we can change the group id here to consumer number two so this is a brand new service that you have on your system and it's doing some completely new business thing. So it could be that there's been some change in your business and now you need to produce a new database table. Um, but the data that you need does not exist in any of your existing database tables, but it does exist inside of your event stream. So what you can do is just change this group ID now to consumer two. And once we start this process again here, uh, 
uh, because it's a brand new consumer ID, we should get all of the messages that were ever sent to that topic. So we can see here that the message format has changed a little bit over the time, uh, but we have got all the historical messages that came in to that topic at some point in the past. Uh, and again, once we send messages on this side, we'll see them kind of show up on the other side. So it's sort of like um, if you've done any event processing, the same sort of idea that you would have with queues, except that these queues last forever and can be consumed by multiple different people. So it's sort of keeping all of your history intact uh, for the, the lifetime of your system. So it gives you a lot of power to do interesting things like uh, deploy minimal applications. And then when something changes in the business, you can go back and rebuild views based on the historical data that existed. Cool. Um, yeah. So that, that consume method, it isn't async, is it? Uh, no, I mean, it's just a little blocking method here. Mm -hmm. It sits here and consumes. So I don't think it's, it's asynchronous, but you could set up a bunch of different threads here and you could have a consumer for each one of these topics um, or okay. set up entire processes based on it. Cool. All right. So that is kind of the basics of consuming messages inside of Kafka. So in the next episode, we will go in a little bit more in detail and we'll try and build out something that's a little bit uh, more interesting than just receiving the date and time on a message. Okay. So remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody on next week's episode. Bye. Great.